Hey guys, what's up? This is an open TTD rail signal tutorial. Let's get started. So to open up the signal menu, you have to open up the track menu and then click on this button here. There's six different types of signals. You can see them here. Each column, each pair in each column is the same type of signal. So they function the same. They just look different. There are four block signals, these four on the left, and two PBS or path-based signals on the right. So first, let's get into how to play signals. So all you have to do is just click on the track and it will place the signal and click again to rotate. So these block signals can face one way, the other way, or they can face in both directions and the path based signals can face in either direction but not both ways. To remove a signal just click on this bulldoze tool and it'll turn the selection red. You can click and it will remove it. If you want to place a lot of signals in a row you can click and drag and if you want to remove a lot of signals in a row you can do the same thing with the bulldozer tool. If you want the signals to face a certain direction when you place them, you can click and have it oriented in the right direction and then click on that first signal and drag and it will build them in the correct type. If you want to convert from one type of signal to the other, choose the signal type you want to convert to and click on this toggle button here and clicking on the signal will convert it. So there are useful shortcuts for all of these tools. Um, the first one is, if you don't have the railroad window open, you can press A and that will open up the track selection tool. Then after doing that, press S to open up the signal menu. And that will help allow you to quickly place, place signals. Now once you place a signal and you want to convert the type of it, instead of using the convert tool, it's usually a lot faster to use this next shortcut, which is control clicking. Hold down the control button and then click it'll cycle through all the different signal types. The last shortcut is useful for placing signals along long stretches of track that aren't necessarily straight or have bridges in them, for example. So instead of placing them down one by one, which is quite tedious, you can control click and drag and will place down a whole row of them. But it's important to note that it will stop whenever it reaches an intersection, so you'll have to do it manually and then click and drag again from there. Also note that it goes over bridges so you don't have to worry about that too much. Now one more thing to note is this number right here. You can see it says 2 now, the tooltip says dragging signal density. This is basically the gap in between the signals when it, when either you drag it or when you can control drag it. So you can see I have it set to 2, the default is like 6 or something. So here if you set it to 4, you can see when we drag, now there are 3 tiles, or 4 total if you add the signal. Same if you control click. Unless you're starting a game and you don't have much money, the best option to set it to is 2, because then that's the smallest gap you can have and still have splits here. So it'll still make sense to have a split. If you put it to signal gap 1, which is the absolute lowest, you fill a track, it'll fill the whole thing with signals, and then you don't have room for a split anymore. Now before we get into the details of how each of the signals work, there is one very useful setting that helps you tell how the trains are using each signal. So if you go to the gear and click on settings, or it might say advanced settings here, and go to uh, interface, and then viewports, there's an option here called, let's see, where is it? Uh, here, show path reservations for tracks. I already have it on, but it's off by default. Basically, this is shows where the trains reserve paths in path-based signals, but we'll get to that later. And uh, I recommend turning it on. I always play with it on. So the first signal type we're going to go over is the block signal. It's the most basic type of signal and it only allows one train to be in the same block at the same time. 
what does that mean? Well, here, let's start with a simple case, just a straight track. Here, in this situation, each of these signals divides the track here into different blocks. So just, for example, this might be one block, this might be another block. It's basically the space in between the signals. So that could be another block. And keep in mind that when tracks cross, all of this is in the same block unless there's a signal and then this part here would be in a different block. So here's an example of a place where you want to use these fancier block signals. So here we have two trains waiting at a pickup station, all signaled with normal block signals, which works, but you can see the problem when another train comes down the line. You can see as this train approaches that this signal is still green, although both of these tracks are full. So this train here is going to have to choose one to go down, and here it chose the shorter one. Then what could happen is that this train actually ends up being filled first. So if this train leaves the station, then all of a sudden this train could have gone that way, but since it jumped to the gun too soon and entered the block already, it couldn't go to the right place. This is where these other signals come in. So the first thing we're going to do to fix this is get rid of these two signals here. And instead we're going to replace them with exit signals. And these are called exit signals because it's where you exit from the little split here. See that these function just like block signals and they're red. Now we want this signal to be red too. so. This is where we use an entry signal. So if we place an entry signal here, you can see that it's red because what this is doing is it's looking in its block right here. That would be, this is that block that this signal is looking at. And it's checking if there are any green exit signals or also combo signals. See here right now it's red. If we provided another path that had an exit signal, like that, it turns green since a train could go this way. Or if it's a green combo signal, it could also go that way. Now what do combo signals do? Combo signals are sort of a combination between exit signals and entry signals. They provide like a middle signal. So let me show you what I'm talking about. So say we wanted to add a few more platforms over here. So I've added two, uh, two stations here two platforms. And this works since we have four exit signals, one for each platform. This thing will be green when any of these are green. The only problem is that there's a sort of longer gap here. You can see that there's a gap of two tiles here when normally I keep my signals at a gap of one tile. To fix that signal gap, we use combo signals. Combo signals you can see here, if I disconnect this, this is an entry signal, it's red. The combo signal is also red, so it works like an entry signal. So what I'm going to do is put a combo signal right here, and this will divide this once big block into two smaller blocks. So now this signal will function like the entry signal. So this will connect this signal here, will connect to this one, which will then in turn connect to these two, and this one will also connect into these two. So then the train will wait here until a platform opens, and that's what we want. So here's another station example, except this one, instead of having an exit on the other side of the platform, the exit is on this side here. So the trains will enter and then they'll exit back out. This is one of the few times that you'll actually want to use two-way block signals so the trains can both enter and exit. Now, it works pretty well, but there's one problem. So here's the situation I'm talking about. Right now I pause the game. We can stop the trains. You can see as this train is leaving, this train here, which should be able to get to this platform here because it's open, 
can't go because this train is in the signal block here. The signal block, again, is this area. Because the train's in that area, this train can't go, even though it has the room to. And this is the problem with block signals. They aren't smart enough to understand where the train wants to go and whether it'll crash into other trains because of that. So although this might not seem a big deal, seem like a big deal here, it's going to be, it's going to slow down the, uh, the throughput of the station. And there's a better way to do this using path signals. So now I've set up the same station using a single one-way path-based signal at the entrance. So let's watch what happens when these trains enter. You can see here, when the train enters the block, it pauses for a moment, a very quick moment, and then it reserves all of this track here. You can see that because we turned that setting on. So let this train go through. This signal doesn't care that this train's already in the block. This train sees it has a path here, so it reserves the path instead of the entire block. Another important thing to note is that it reserves the whole path all the way until the next signal. So if I put a signal here, it would reserve it all the way to there. It doesn't just reserve it up to the station. And that can be confusing to new people who are looking at these path signals sometimes. Now you can see here, when this train moves out of the way, and this train moves as well, both trains can reserve the path and they can both be in the same block at the same time, which will help this station get more trains through it. So here's an example of a situation where you'd want to use two-way path-based signals. You can see here where I have an inline station that has entrances and exits from both sides. You can see when this train entered the platform here, it reserved the track all the way up to this area here. So the way to fix this, you could just put block signals here and then it allows the train to reserve that path there. The problem with that is then when the train tries to exit, you can skip order, it'll try to exit, it'll stop here because this whole signal block might have a train in it and then we have the whole efficiency problem like before. The solution is to use these two-way path-based signals. If we used one-way path-based signals, then this train couldn't enter. So if you use two-way path signals, then the trains will stop reserving their track at the two-way path signal, and the trains can still enter. So now we have an efficient two-way station here. Trains can both enter and exit from both sides whenever it's possible to. And that's, this is the end of uh, the Open TTD Signal tutorial. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any questions, be sure to leave them in the comments and I'll answer them to the best of my ability. And I'll see you next time. Goodbye.